Shell voicings are three note chords that work especially well in jazz and blues. They're easy to play, they sound great, and even though they only have three notes, they're not just beginner chords. Professional players use these all the time, and so can you. Guitar players tend to think in terms of overall chord shapes, but these shell voicings can be easier to remember if you understand how they all relate to each other. In this lesson, I'm going to go over just a little bit of theory, and then I'll show you a way to visualize these shell voicings as a whole. If you want to skip the theory and jump right to the chord shapes, I completely understand. We're not going to go in depth here, but I do want to show you where these chords come from. Most chords are built on stacked thirds, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's a C major scale, and the notes are numbered below by scale degree. C is 1, D is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then the C an octave higher is 1 again. From C to E, we count three notes, C, D, E. And C and E are a third apart. From E to G, we count three notes, E, F, G. And E and G are also a third apart. And from G to B, we count, of course, three notes, G, A, B. So G and B are a third apart. We can stack these thirds up to form chords. We're going to start with C, which we'll call the root note, because this is the note we're using to build our chord. We stack an E on top of that, and now we have a root and a third. We're calling this E the third of the chord because we're relating it to the C scale. E is the third note of the C major scale. We then stack the G on top of that, and we're calling this the fifth of the chord because, again, we're relating this note back to the C major scale, and G is the fifth note of the C major scale. And finally, we stack the B on top of that, and we're calling this B the seventh of the chord. What we have now is a type of seventh chord with a root, third, fifth, and seventh. In this case, we have a C major 7 chord. Of all the notes in a 7th chord, the 5th is the least necessary. We can remove the 5th from a 7th chord, and it still has the most essential notes of that chord. What we're left with is a shell voicing, the root, 3rd, and 7th. Most of the shell voicings you play will have a root, a third, and a seventh. But you might see some other numbers. You might see a fourth instead of a third. You might see a sixth instead of a seventh. And some of the chords in this lesson will have a fifth, and we'll talk about those as we get to them. We have one more thing to talk about before we get to these shell voicings. Each chord is going to be labeled with an R for root, three for third, and a 7 for the 7th. Sometimes you'll see just a plain number, like a 3 or a 7, and sometimes you'll see a flat or sharp in front of the number, like a flat 3 or a flat 7. The numbers show how each note relates to the root of the chord, and more specifically, the numbers show how the notes relate to the root of that chord as if that root were the beginning of a major scale. For example, here's that C major 7 chord again. It has a root, the C, a third, the E, and a seventh, the B. We label the E and B as 3 and 7 because they are the third and seventh notes of a C major scale. Here's a C minor 7 chord. This chord also has a root, the C, a flat 3, the E flat, and a flat 7 the B flat. The E from the C major scale has been flatted, and the B has also been flatted. And that's why sometimes you'll see flat or sharp in the fretboard labels. And now we're on to the good stuff. This series of chords has a root on the fifth string, a third on the fourth string, which is going to be a major third, and then some other note on the third string. The root and the third are constant. It's the other note on the third string that completes the chord. 
So if I play this R3-5, I have a D major chord because my root note is on the D, string 5, fret 5. And this is one of those chords that does include the fifth because major triads do not have sevenths. Major triads only have roots, thirds, and fifths. If I change that note on the third string to sharp five, I now have an augmented triad. And if I move it again, I have a major six chord, which in this case would be labeled as D6. I move to the flat seven, now I have a dominant seventh chord, which will be labeled as D7. Now it might seem strange that a D7 chord would have a flat seven in it, but remember we're relating these notes to the root as if the root were the start of a major scale. The seventh note of a D major scale is C sharp, but this note is a C. So even though this is called a seventh chord, the seventh of the chord is actually considered a flat seven. And we're going to leave it at that because I want to talk less about theory at this point and more about these chord shapes. Anyway, if I move that note on the third string one fret higher, I now have a D major seven. And if I move it again, I have another D major chord. But this time, instead of having a root three five, I have a root, a third, and another root on the top. And here's the entire sequence. Again, these are all gonna be D chords because my root is on the note D. D major, D augmented, D6, D7, D major seven, and D again. This next series has the same fifth string root and the row of notes on the third string is the same, but now on the fourth string, we have a flat third or flat three, which is also known as a minor third. The root and flat three are constant, and it's the third string note that completes the chord. So if I play this root flat three five, I have a D minor chord because my root note is on the D, string five fret five. And this chord does include the fifth because minor triads do not have sevenths. They only have roots, flat three, and five. If I change that note on the third string to the flat six, I now have a minor flat six chord. If I move it again, I have a minor six chord. A cool thing about this minor six chord is that it can also be used as a diminished seven chord. I'll get into the theory of this in a future video, but for now, suffice to say that the one note that makes a minor six different from a diminished seven is missing in this shell voicing, so it can be used for either chord. And what makes you perceive it as one chord or the other is the musical context or the chords that surround it. Now, if I move to the flat seven, I have a minor seven chord. A nice thing about this minor seven shell voicing is that you can also play it when you see a minor seven flat five chord, which is also known as a half diminished chord. Remember that for a lot of these chords, we're only playing the root, third, and the seventh, and we're leaving out the fifth of the chord. In this case, we've taken out the one note that's different between a minor seven chord and a minor seven flat five, or half diminished, depending on how you like to call it. So you can use it for either chord. And if we move that third string note one fret higher, we've got a D minor major seven. If I move it again, I've got another D minor triad, but this time instead of having a root flat three and five, I have a root flat three and another root on top. Here's that whole sequence. D minor, D minor flat six, D minor six, which could also be used as D diminished. D minor seven, which could also be used as D minor seven flat five, or D half diminished, depending on how you like to call it. D minor with major seven, and then another D minor. Now we have a root on the sixth string, a third, on the third string, that's our major third, and then some other note on the fourth string. 
the root and the third are going to stay the same, and we move that other note around to change the chord. So if I play this R5-3, I have an A major chord because my root note is on the A, string 6, fret 5. This is a major triad, which includes the root 3 and 5 and does not have a 7th. If I change that note to the sharp 5, now I have an augmented triad. Now here's another way to play an augmented triad. It does not fit neatly into the system, but I'm including it here because it's very easy to play and nine times out of 10, this is the shape that I'll play. Anyway, if I move that fourth string note again, I have a major six chord, which we would label as A6. Move that to the flat seven, now I have a dominant seventh chord, which will be labeled as A7. And again, even though this chord has a flat seven in it, the chord is labeled A7. If I move the fourth string note one fret higher, I have an A major seven. And if I move it again, I have another A major chord, but this time instead of, instead of having a root and a third and a fifth, I have two roots with a third on the top. And here's the whole sequence. A, A augmented, A6, A7, A major seven, and then another A chord. This last series has the same root note on the sixth string and the fourth string notes move around, but this time we have a minor third on the third string. That'll be the flat three. As before, the root and the flat three are constant, and it's the note on the fourth string that completes the chord. So if I play this root five flat three, I have an A minor chord because my root note is on the A, string six, fret five. This chord does include the fifth because minor triads do not have sevenths. They only have roots, flat three, and five. If I change that note to the flat six, I now have a minor flat six chord. And if I move it again, I have a minor six chord. And depending on the musical context, I can call this a minor six or A diminished seven. And again, I'll save the theory explanation of that for a future video. If I move the fourth string note to a flat seven, I now have a minor seven chord. And just like the fifth string shell voicing we already looked at, you can play this minor seven shell voicing in place of a minor seven flat five or half diminished chord. If I move that fourth string note one fret higher, I have an A minor major seven. And if I move it again, I have another A minor chord. But this time, instead of, instead of having a root five and a flat three, I have two roots with a flat three on the top. Here's the whole series. A minor, A minor flat six, A minor six, which you could also call A diminished seven, A minor seven, which you could also call A minor seven flat five or A half diminished. A minor with major seven, and then A minor again. To use these shell voicings, you need to know where to place the root of each chord. For example, if I wanna play a D major seven shell voicing with the root on the fifth string, I'm gonna place the root of that shape on string five, fret five, the note D. If I move it up a fret, I now have an E flat major seven. And if I move it up again, I have an E major seven, and so forth. So at the very least, you need to know the names of the notes on the fifth and sixth strings. I've already posted some videos on learning the fretboard and I have a free PDF called learning the guitar fretboard. So we're not gonna go into these notes right now, but I'll leave links for those videos and that free PDF in the description.
If you're just getting into shell voicings, I recommend starting with the dominant seventh, minor seven, and major six first. I have a video exploring these chords in more depth. I'll leave a link for that in the description. I have a free shell voicing PDF you can download, and if you're looking for a more systematic approach to learning shell voicings, check out my book, Three Note Jazz Guitar Chords. And remember, if you need some help learning the fretboard, I've posted videos on the topic, and I have that free PDF called Learning the Guitar Fretboard. I'll leave links for the books, the videos, and the freebies all in the description. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with more guitar tips.